Ahoy! Just as I was about to post a completely different video today, New World dropped a ton of information on us about the flail. A lot of stuff that we haven't heard yet. Super interesting, super exciting, especially because there are some new mechanics here that I'm really looking forward to. First of all, the devs confirmed that the flail in fact has healing. They said it's partly a tank and partly a healer weapon, so absolutely a paladin playstyle. It'll have low raw damage, but high survivability, support and utility, and use a physical and magical damage mix. What's interesting is that there's one statement in their post about this saying, whether you swipe, thrust, strike, or unleash magical AoEs, all attacks have buffs and debuffs that alter their combat function. Now they're mentioning all physical damage types here, which makes me think that between all of the abilities of the flail, you'll actually be able to do all of these types of damage. We already knew that the flail scales with strength and focus. Now we know the exact values. It's going to have a 90% strength scaling and a 65% focus scaling, which is like most other weapons except greatsword when it comes to split scaling. So for example, the hatchet uses this. However, and this brings us to the first interesting mechanic, some of the buffs on the flail will scale with focus in terms of duration or the power of the buff itself. So focus is used for more than healing here. This makes sense when looking at the healing comparison later, and I really like that they're implementing focus in multiple other ways here, so you're encouraged to not just focus on strength in, for example, a tank build. They do also specifically mention the bruiser capabilities of the strength build, though I don't know what exactly the definition of bruiser is here. Further, they mention that the flail is a one-handed weapon with the option for an offhand shield. Now, this is an interesting statement because I don't think this sword, for example, is usually described like that. You wouldn't say the sword is a weapon with an option for an offhand shield. The shield is very much implied. And this is at least in part because some of the abilities require the shield and also because the shield gives you so many more extra effects on top of attribute points. It also has three extra perks, so you're sacrificing too much not using that. The flail, on the other hand, doesn't require the shield for any of its abilities. This once again makes me speculate, as I did recently, that perks are going away from shields entirely, because otherwise, why would they say with the option for an offhand shield? You wouldn't want to run it without an offhand shield if you're just giving up three perks, that would be kind of pointless. And a lot of the promo material also features the flail without a shield. But we've got much more specific details about the weapon and its mechanics. Before we get into that, the video for today was supposed to be the trading tips for the expansion. Since that is delayed until tomorrow due to this video, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to get those trading tips one day before everyone else. Last chance to buy stuff while still a little bit cheaper. Now let's talk details. The devs actually gave us a stat overview for how the flail works. It's going to have a medium attack speed, I guess that's maybe comparable to Great Axe or Warhammer, though I don't really know, we don't really have many other weapons where we have knowledge about how they classify the attack speed. It has an effective extended melee range. And I think this is very, very interesting. We don't know how much further than other weapons this is, but even though the weapon's damage is a bit lower, I think this can kind of give you an edge in a fight. The hits may do less damage, but if you can get more hits in while slightly outranging the enemy and keeping them at that distance, that could be very effective. We can see that kind of playstyle with a blunderbuss, even though that obviously has a ton more burst. The flail is also labeled as high in terms of buffs and debuffs, and is for the roles support and tank, though support is kind of their idea of healer as well, as far as I understand it. In terms of strength, they say the survivability, utility and versatility are good, as well as the support and defense. The weaknesses are low damage and 1v1 combat, but I feel like people are gonna make it work in 1v1 somehow. I'm definitely at least gonna try. In terms of unique mechanics, the weapon has the extra range, the flail tip extends during attacks to add additional reach, again, that's the same as the extended melee, I suppose. And it has Impairment, which is a status effect that combines both a damage over time effect and a weaken on the enemy. Of course, we also get tons more details about the skill trees. The left tree is going to be the Cleric tree, which is mainly healing and support via buffing and debuffing. The right tree is Bastion, which is focused on defensiveness and tanking, buffing your allies, giving them more defense and increasing your own survivability. The post mentions most abilities feature support-focused attack upgrades, so solo players can potentially forego these skills to better spec themselves out for their own survival. And now we're getting to what may be my favorite part about the flail, even though I like a lot of different things about the flail. The flail has a changing passive based on the shield type you use. We speculated about this the other day in my shield changes video, but we know what they do now. So the round shield, will for some abilities just provide you with more damage, nothing auto-surprising there. 
The tower shield will give you defense or grit, though this was said in a way that made me think maybe they just meant grit as in tenacity and not actually the grit effect, but I'm hoping it's actually the grit effect. But the absolute winner here and the one that I'm super excited for is the kite shield. I said maybe they will make the kite shield viable and I think they will. One of the abilities will have a stagger, but only if you're using a kite shield. And with a small amount of detective work, we can likely find out which one that is. Because one of the abilities that has the three shield icons is Barrage, and Barrage already has a stagger on it, so it wouldn't really make sense for it to add a stagger. That is, of course, unless this stagger is added during the dashing portion. The other ability with a three shield icon, however, Arcane Smite, does not come with a stagger by default, so to me, it seems very likely that this just adds a stagger through this particular attack. A mini leap with 130% AoE damage plus a dot plus a weaken and then a stagger on top of that sounds pretty potent to me. If you're enjoying the video so far, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. We'll get back to more ability details in a second, but first let's quickly look at the comparison to other weapons because I thought that was quite interesting. The first comparison is with the life staff. The flail is weaker in healing and range than the life staff about the same in DPS and buffing, which actually means it shouldn't be too bad in terms of DPS, because Lifestaff DPS is not completely miserable, even though it is not a DPS weapon, and it is stronger in terms of debuffing and melee, obviously. I think melee kind of implies crowd control here, because I think that's a very differentiating factor between the Lifestaff and the Flail. In comparison to the Void Gauntlet, the Flail is weaker when it comes to damage, range and healing. Damage is no surprise because the Void Gauntlet can be quite damage focused. Range, of course, the ranged version if you're not using Void Blade is longer, always. Healing is interesting though. Obviously the Void Gauntlet usually heals less than a Life Staff and the Flail will heal less than that. So healing is going to be a factor still, but it's definitely not the highest priority. Which explains why focus also scales with other things on the Flail. The weapons are about the same in buffing and debuffing, very interesting considering just how good the Void Gauntlet is at those things. And the Flail is stronger in terms of crowd control and survivability. Survivability, no surprise, especially from the shield, but the crowd control part is interesting because I think the Scream is still one of the better crowd controls in the game. Compared to the Sword and Shield, we have fewer defensive actions and resulting from that also weaker tanking. And we have lower DPS, which is not surprising because SNS can pull pretty good DPS. In terms of buffing and support, it's roughly the same, but the Flail has more utility and more ally support than the Sword and Shield. And I would say Sword and Shield is pretty good at that, especially when you consider that even to this day you will have some SNS tanks in war just sitting on point holding blocks. So if the Flail can outclass that, the damage reduction that you get from that, that's going to be very strong and we'll look at the effects a little bit later. They're also comparing it to the Hatchet, I'm not sure why, but the Flail is weaker in terms of DPS speed. Uh, they're about the same in terms of self-buffing and it's stronger at supporting. No surprises there really. Probably also stronger at CC. The article also talks about suggested weapon pairings. Of course, the Flail and Lifestaff is one of them uh, for focus and support based weapons. Just healing your group, survival and general supporting and healing. Kind of similar to Lifestaff and Void Gauntlet. Secondary is the Flail and the Void Gauntlet. Focused and support based weapon, you can lean into the healing and support aspect or utilize the Void Gauntlet's damaging abilities for a more versatile combination of damage and support. This is interesting to me because I think the scaling kind of makes this a little bit difficult since both are secondary scaling with focus and that damage doesn't typically scale with focus, but rather the utility. So I guess you'd make an in primary focus secondary build with con and the flail would just be used for CC and disruption and buffs and not so much to actually do any damage at all and you just wouldn't put any points of strength and maybe you put an int gem in the flail but i'm not sure what that would do for the focus effects so yeah i think this is a bit of an odd one but i'm sure it'll work out somehow especially if you're just focusing on buffing and debuffing the flail and sword and shield is tank and support focused of course for self-survival support drawing aggro and i think you can also get a bunch of extra viability for your team so that helps when tanking too and then suggested to pair the flail with strength scaling weapons, Warhammer, Great Axe, Hatchet or Greatsword as an off tank or DPS. This combination is used as a secondary on damage focus build to add some survivability and buffing and support. I think this is what's going to be most interesting for me. I'm especially curious what happens if you run a Great Axe primary and then use the flail as a secondary to basically further CC people if you catch them in a graph well for example. I also think the combination with a Warhammer or Greatsword could be super fun. 
And we've talked about the abilities in microscopic detail before. I will link my video about that at the end if you haven't seen it yet. So we're going to focus on the new stuff, the new details that we didn't know about. In the first ability, Arcane Smite, you strike the ground with an arcane force to deal damage to all targets around the point of impact. A lingering area of effect will inflict impairment to any remaining enemies. The updates here grant buffs and lifesteal, though the icons also look like there is cooldown reduction involved probably with the buffs, unless these are display solos. And again, based on what we know, I think this is likely the one where you get a stagger with the kite shield. Okay, Vortex is the spinny attack with multiple hits that also empowers your allies. The upgrades here grant healing and a cleanse. Absolutely not what I expected based on the icons. I thought this would have a root and a haste. Again, these could be placeholders or there could just be more to it. Okay, Eruption is a magical ground slam that then applies two stacks of impairment as well. So a lot of debuffing going on and you have a follow-up melee attack afterwards. The upgrades grant a small self-heal and a stronger chain heal to nearby allies. So there's your healing part. And we can also see in the icons that there's likely some form of cooldown reduction, as well as some form of slow or cripple. In case you didn't know it yet, the capstone better together provides healing to yourself and allies if there are allies near you. But there is another notable passive that we get a mention of here, which is leader of the pack. When no allies are nearby, you will deal increased damage. When one or more allies are nearby, they will deal additional damage. I can already see someone playing Flail as a damage build and getting annoyed at their teammates for getting close and stealing their buff. On the Bastion Tree side, Barrage is probably the most iconic ability at this point, where you charge forward, do this forward spinning leap afterwards, and then slam on the ground. This has a ton of upgrades, one even involves a shield. What we know so far is that you can inflict some damage to the area around the impact point, and you can fortify allies within range. When primarily using this as an escape, these things might not be that impactful. The second ability, Trip, simply trips an enemy, basically a knockdown, and deals 50% weapon damage. So it's very simple, and I said it's kind of like a weaker wrecking ball by itself, but I also said that the perks will likely have a significant impact on how this works, and that's exactly what's happening. So one of the effects, likely the second one down based on the icon, is a rent to the enemy and a fortify to yourself. You can also deliver a powerful follow-up attack, which completely changed the dynamic of this attack, which is likely the last icon. And then the first icon is a cooldown reduction icon. I'm kind of thinking because it's in the tree twice that this may mean that basic attacks may reduce the cooldown of these abilities. The last ability, Warding Bludgeon, is a leap that provides fortify to nearby allies and then you slam down on the ground. The upgrade here is very, very interesting. I'm pretty sure it's the very bottom one and it's called Best Friends. When activating the ability, you will become linked to a nearby ally. While this link is active, you both gain damage absorption and the ally deals more damage. That by itself already sounds strong and useful, but then keep in mind there's also Human Shield, the capstone perk. This also links you with an ally when you hit an enemy with an ability, which goes perfectly together with the Warding Bludgeon attack. And in this case, the ally will only take 50% of the incoming damage and you get 35% damage transferred, so the damage is overall reduced, you get a smaller portion of that, but that's on top of the other link effect, so damage reduction between you is just going to be absolutely massive. It's not the consistent kind of reduction that Sword and Shield has, but it's a lot more useful in emergency situations when you can get massive reductions all at once. Another notable passive here is Vital Suppressant, which while above 50% health reduces the damage taken, and below 50% health decreases the block stamina damage taken. Once again, extremely useful in emergency situations. There's some crazy, especially team play potential with the flail, and I'm really curious to see how that will play out. It also seems like we may be getting the PTR this week, just based on the fact that the next video that they announced at the end of the video is the Q&A, the dev Q&A, which they previously specifically said will be after the PTR comes out. Consider subscribing and clicking the bell if you're interested in trading tips for the expansion, that's coming tomorrow, or expansion info in general, I cover everything that comes out in that regard. If you're interested in more details about the flail abilities, I will link a video right here. If you'd like to support me further and get early trading tips, you can do so on my Patreon. Thanks to my patrons who already do that. I quickly want to show you some of the sound effects for the flail at the end here because I think they sound really nice and they also have some nice visual effects. Thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.